most exciting destination in all of northern Wisconsin. LCL Casino Lodge and Convention Center Hayward. LCL. Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Name News Update. It's Friday, July 21st. Many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for today from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. The American Cancer Society has awarded $100,000 in grants to five community health centers across the country to reduce colon cancer disparities in American Indian and Alaska Native populations through the community health advocates implementing nationwide grants for Empowerment and Equity Grant Program. The grants are $100,000 each and span two years. The grantees are Arctic Slope Native Association in Barrow, Alaska, Fond du Lac Service Division in Cloquet, Minnesota, Keweenaw Bay Indian Community in Barriga, Michigan, Native Americans for Community Action in Flagstaff, Arizona, and Riverside San Bernardino County Indian Health Incorporated in Grand Terrace, California. Award-winning self-taught Native American sculptor and metalsmith, Charles Pratt passed away July 12th at his home in El Reno, Oklahoma, from complications of a decade-long battle with Parkinson's disease. One of seven siblings, Charles Pratt was born November 8, 1937 in Concho, Oklahoma, to Oscar Noble Pratt, who was Cheyenne and Arapaho, and Anna Gurrier Pratt Shadlow, who was Cheyenne and Sue. A noted Cheyenne storyteller, his mother was named 1987 National Indian Woman of the Year, and 1991 Oklahoma Indian Mother of the Year. The Indian Arts and Crafts Association named Charles Pratt its Artist of the Year in 1985 and 2004, and he received its Lifetime Achievement Honor in 2002. He earned more than 400 awards during his long artistic career, and his work is in private and public collections around the world. In April, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City announced that it would put its Native American art collections in the same wing as American art. Like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, more museums are making an effort to give Native Americans a voice in the United States' rich art history. Museums have also worked to return collections that weren't really theirs to take. According to the museum, in order for museums to integrate Native American art into their collections, they'll have to be open to more types of art. Meanwhile, some tribes have started their own museums. There's more than 50 tribal-run art museums across the country. Museums are also starting to give modern Native American artists more recognition. The San Diego Film Foundation, the nonprofit organization that presents the annual San Diego International Film Festival, has announced the members of its 2017 American Indian Advisory Board. The foundation's executive and artistic director, Tanya Mantooth, a Seminole Indian said the festival, to be held October 4th through the 8th, is an ideal platform for American Indians to communicate. Of the eight advisory board members, those from local California tribes are Tishmal Turner, Erica Pinto, Cody Martinez, Temet Aguilera, Adrian Brown, and Brandon Banagas. The other members are Ruben Chato and Saginaw Grant. Guitarist Stevie Salas' research has led to the documentary Rumble, The Indians Who Rock the World, which traces the impact of Native people on America's rich musical history. Rumble, which won a special jury prize at this year's Sundance Film Festival, opens in New York on July 26th, followed by a national rollout. Salas, an Apache guitarist who has played with Rod Stewart, George Clinton, Bootsy Collins, Eddie Money, and many others, is executive producer of the film, which was directed by Catherine Bainbridge. It came on the radio, a guitar instrumental, and it changed everything. Link Ray, it's rock and roll. Rumble. Yeah, that's the one. Rumble. Hey, Rumble. Rumble had the power to help me say, fuck it. I'm going to be a musician. And then I found out that he was an Indian. The music that we know here in the United States is fully supported by input from Native and Indigenous people. Mr. Randy Casillo! Randy had become one of the most influential heavy metal drummers in the world. This is Jesse Ed Davis. 
I just particularly fell in love with Jesse Evan Davis. He was with Taj Mahal, and Taj's album is what spurred me to rock more. And here's your rockin' chair lady, Mildred Bailey. From 16 to 20 years old, that's the only thing I listened to was Mildred Bailey. I just said, I want to learn how to sing like her. Figuring out that these people were Indians, and then we started to ask ourselves, why didn't anyone else know that? There was this key expression be proud you're an Indian, but be careful who you tell. All of a sudden, I was talking about Native American issues and big time television. And all of a sudden, everything disappeared. From Charlie Patton to Link Ray, Robbie Robinson invented the genre. Jimi Hendrix is the best in his field. Jesse Ed Davis, everybody wanted him. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? On too long under the radar. illuminates how Native North American music and musicians influenced the creation of the blues, the development of jazz, the birth of rock and roll, and even the elaboration of country music. Rumble takes its name from a seminal slice of rock and roll created by guitarist Link Ray, a Shawnee from North Carolina whose 1958 hit Rumble introduced the world to the power chord. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.